All right, Wayside School Under the Cloud of Doom, chapter 26. The ultimate, ultimate test. Yes, that's two ultimates. The word ultimate has two meanings. It could mean final or it could mean most important. The stairway quiz was both. It was the final event of the third day and it counted double. The students were worn out before they started. They'd already had the science crawl, right and left handwriting, animal imitations, upside down singing, and blindfolded smelling. The stairway quiz would require knowledge, stamina, and most important, speed. This was Dee Dee's special talent. Dee Dee was a pretty fast runner on flat ground, but she was even faster going up and down stairs. That was because her left leg was a little bit shorter than her right leg, or maybe it was the other way around. Either way, it gave her an obvious advantage. Stop. Just a second. Lewis, the yard teacher, stood next to the bottom step. On your mark, he called out, get set. Lewis blew the whistle. The children rushed past him, knees pumping and elbows flailing. Dee Dee started way back in the pack, but besides her uneven legs, she had another advantage. She was skinny and short. She could squeeze past the slower kids ahead of her. And they were all slower than Dee Dee. And she, as she neared the third floor, only Damien remained ahead of her. A man with a black mustache was waiting on the landing. How many quarts in a gallon, he asked Damien. Eight, said Damien. Damien was sent back down to the first floor. Name a city in England, he said to Dee Dee. London, Dee Dee shouted, then continued on up. Dr. Pickle was waiting on the fourth floor. Are dreams real, he asked. Dee Dee was stumped. She could hear other kids charging up the stairs behind her. She hated to have to go back down. They're real dreams, she said. Dr. Pickle rubbed his beard. Very interesting answer, he said, and let her pass. By the time she reached the ninth floor, she could only hear distant footsteps behind her. What do you call someone who writes books, asked Mrs. Surlaw. You don't call them, said Dee Dee. You must never interrupt a great author during her moment of inspiration. I think you said the correct answer in there somewhere, the librarian de decided. On the 12th floor, the man with the mustache was waiting again. Dee Dee wondered how he had gotten ahead of her. Name the largest river in the United States. Dee Dee couldn't remember its name, but she knew how to spell it. M-I-S-S-I-S-S-I-P-P-I. Miss -S -S -I -I. Masha asked the question on the 15th floor. How many points on a fork? Dee Dee formed a picture of a fork in her mind, but when she tried to count the points, they blurred. Three, she tried. I'm so sorry, Dee Dee, said Miss Mush. She didn't have to go all the way back down to the bottom, just to the tenth. Ron was coming up on the other way. Hi, Dee Dee, he greeted her. Hi, Ron, said Dee Dee. Hope you studied your forks and spoons. She reached the tenth, answered another question there, then again on the eleventh and twelfth. Ron was coming down. Hi, Ron. Hi, Dee Dee. She reached Miss Mush a second time. What was Christopher Columbus's favorite vegetable? Asked the lunch lady. Dee Dee knew that one. Cabbage! She had spent two whole nights studying the history of cabbage. When she reached the 18th floor, the man with the mustache was there again. Are zebras black with white stripes or white with black stripes? Dee Dee thought it was the same thing, but knew that it had to be, knew that it had to be wrong. The first one, she guessed, was that white with black stripes or black with white stripes? I don't remember, said Dee Dee. Me neither, the man admitted, and let her pass. A tall, thin woman asked the next question. She looked like a teacher, but Dee Dee had never seen her before. Strangely, the woman had one very long fingernail on her pinky. Please recite the alphabet backward. Dee Dee had to close her eyes to concentrate. Z, Y, X. It took her a long time. In her mind, Dee Dee had to keep saying the alphabet forward in order to figure out the next backward letter. She could hear footsteps coming closer, and then Marisha came up alongside her. What are you stopping for, Marisha asked. Dee Dee looked around. The woman with the long fingernail was gone. C, B, A, she finished, just in case. Dee Dee and Marisha continued up together, reaching the 20th floor at the same time. The mustache man was back again. How many toes does a three-toed sloth have, she asked. That had to be the easiest question yet, thought Dee Dee. Three, she said. Twelve, said Marisha. Dee Dee was sent back down to the 15th floor. Now she really had to turn on the jets. She leaped around and over the other kids on her way down. And then using her uneven legs, she practically flew back up the stairs as she answered all the questions correctly. She shot past Marisha between the 28th and 29th floors, answered a question about the different kinds of dirt, and then finally reached the top of the stairs where Mrs. Jules was waiting. How many points on a fork, Mrs. Jules asked. I already had that question, Dee Dee said as she took several long deep breaths. Her heart was pounding. Good, then you know the answer. 
Once again, Dee Dee tried to picture a fork in her mind. It was either three or four. Twelve, she declared, still confused about the sloth, so it's three toes and four feet. She trudged back down. Hi, Dee Dee, said Marisha on her way up. Dee Dee didn't say hi back. After school, only three of the unbreakables could be seen by the flagpole. Marisha was still inside the school. Photographers were snapping her picture, and she was being questioned by newspaper reporters from all around the world. When she finally came outside, she was carrying a giant trophy. Sorry, I took so long, she said. You must think you're really great, said Joy. Marisha shrugged. Well, you should, said Ron. Because you are, said Dee Dee. Marisha set down her trophy and said, you guys are the greatest friends ever. They held out their hands, locked pinkies and thumbs, and shouted, unbreakable. Friends stick by each other when one is down. That is a true test of friendship. But sometimes it is harder to stick by a friend who is up. That is the ultimate test of friendship. Chapter 27, Kachuga Boop. The ultimate test was over and nobody was sent back to kindergarten. Mrs. Jules had made up the test so that every one of her students had a chance to shine using his or her special talent. Anyone with nail clippings, she asked. Myron came to the front of the room and dropped 37 clippings into the nail bucket. 19 came from toes and 18 from fingers. He started to do the math on the board. 999,962 plus 37 equals... And then he only got to the nine. See that right there? Two plus seven is nine. He was suddenly startled by a very loud kachuga boop. He dropped the chalk. This was a bell nobody in the class had heard before, not even Mrs. Jules. Then came another chahuga kachuga, followed by two boops. What's it mean, Mrs. Jules? shouted Leslie. Everybody keep calm, said Mrs. Jules. Kachuga boop, boop, boop. Mrs. Jules hurried to the back closet. It started up again. Kachuga boop, kachuga boop, boop. Mrs. Jules threw open the closet door and started tossing books and supplies out of the way. Kachuga boop, boop, boop. She finally removed a very large book covered with dust. The Complete Guide to Bells, said Terrence, reading the book's title over Mrs. Jules' shoulder. Mrs. Jules sat on the floor, turning the pages until she got to the index. The kachuga booping continued, making it difficult for her to concentrate. She found it. Kachuga boop, page 297. She quickly turned to that page. Suddenly a loud boom shook the classroom. The lights went out. This time, nobody screamed. They were too scared. Mrs. Jules lit a candle. In the flickering light, she read aloud from page 297. If you hear a kachuga followed by one, two, and then three boops, you should. She stopped and blew a cloud of dust off the page, then tried to find where she had left off. One, two, and then three boops. You should run for your lives. A cloud of doom is about to destroy everything. She dropped the book. Everybody outside, she ordered. Another boom shook the classroom so hard that the clock fell off the wall. The children ran to the door, but it wouldn't open. The paperclip closet must have fallen over, said Damien. It's blocking the door. Paperclip closet, asked Mrs. Jules. She glared at Jason. Sorry, he said. Jason couldn't keep a secret. Todd, Marisha, Damien, and Allison all pushed together, but the door wouldn't budge. Let Steven in there, urged Kathy. He's been doing all those push-ups. With Steven's help, they pushed the door open. Sirens wailed from the closet, which lay on the ground. A smoke screen filled the area. In the light of Mrs. Jewel's candle, they could see that the chains and steel bar had been shattered. Paper clips were strewn all over the floor. floor. Benjamin and Ronnie started picking them up. Leave them, shouted Mrs. Jewel's. Now they knew it was serious. Mrs. Jules told everyone to hold hands as she led the way down the staircase. Paul grabbed, oh, the ice cream truck just went by. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Paul grabbed Leslie's pigtail. What are you doing, she demanded. It's either that or your hand, he said. Okay, then, Leslie agreed. The kachuga booping continued as more loud booms shook the school. A gust of wind blew out Mrs. Jules's candle, and the class continued down in darkness. Joe stepped on a skateboard, which somebody had left in the middle of the stairs. He fell, pulling John down with him. When, who pulled down Dana? Who pulled down Jenny? Who pulled down Randy? Who pulled down Terrence? The chain reaction ended with Damien pulling down Mrs. Jewels. The class lay sprawled across the stairs as the school shook around them. We're doomed, Mac wailed. Look, exclaimed BB. A door had opened, and there was a light coming from inside a classroom. A teacher stood in the doorway. Quick, come inside, she beckoned. You'll be safe here. She had a long fingernail on her pinky.